All right, um, I've got five paths, so I think uh, now's probably a good time to start. Uh, my name is James Blair. I'm uh, one of the maintainers of Zool, and I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what we've been doing over the past six months, uh, what we've been doing before then, and what we plan to be doing in the future. Um, uh, who here is familiar with Zool? Okay, most of you. Um, good. So I, I won't uh, I won't do too much in the way of um, preliminaries, uh, but I will try to get the DPD. There we go. All right. Um, so the um, uh, uh, six months ago in uh, Vancouver, we announced um, version three of the of, of Zool, and um, we announced that it was a uh, uh, becoming a pilot project under the OpenStack uh, Foundation. Um, give me just a minute, sorry. Um, yeah, sorry. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so uh, we announced at the Vancouver Summit uh, that we uh, that we're becoming a pilot project under the OpenStack Foundation, um, and that's because we had been using uh, Zool for six years, um, and uh, and we thought that it was uh, time to uh, other people were were beginning to use it, and uh, it was becoming a more uh, generally useful application, and so we thought it was time to sort of um, uh, bring it out from uh, from inside of the OpenStack project and make it its own top level project uh, to to sort of recognize um, that that growing community uh, and the the broader scope that we were bringing to to Zool. So we we not only um, uh, we were not at this point only focused on OpenStack's use of Zool, but we also um, were sort of uh, making other users of Zool um, uh, sort of a first class concern in the project. And we were adding a bunch of new features to Zool uh, that, that reflect this. Um, so uh, a few things uh, that, that happened before the, the, the Vancouver Summit where we made this announcement. Um, we made Zool uh, Python 3 only, so we were we, yeah, we were doing a lot of breaking changes uh, anyway, so we figured that was the time to say um, this thing is going to be very uh, forward-looking. And so we, we, we jumped on the Python 3 train and, uh, and haven't looked back. Um, uh, it's, it's so much easier to write code for only one version of Python. <laughs> yes. Uh, we added in-repository configuration uh, to Zool. That was a... Um, a major change from the way that it had previously worked, and uh, and it's um, it sort of changed the way that people use Zool. Um, just being able to propose a change uh, and then add uh, add jobs that begin using that change immediately uh, is uh, with with without those jobs having to land. Yeah, uh, the fully speculative in in repo job. That I'm going to put this here because I have a Lord. Large yeah, you can, you can talk to it from about <laughs> there. You can talk from back here, and it'll be better for everybody. Yeah. Um, we adopted Ansible as the job execution engine um, because we needed a job execution engine, and uh, it turns out that there was a really good one that already existed, so we decided to use it instead of writing our own. Um, and, and, and Ansible mm -hmm. playbooks look remarkably like the old YAML from the Jenkins job builder templates that we, that we had originally written. Um, uh, so it wasn't... I mean, it was different enough that my migration script uh, was terrible and, and only got about 80% of the migrations done, but similar enough that conceptually as a user, it's, it's not a huge shift if you didn't already know Ansible. Yeah, and yeah, and also a lot of people have been using Ansible for other things, so hmm. it just, it, it's, uh, it's worked out. If you happen to use Ansible already, that's great. If you don't, uh, it's pretty easy to use uh, or just use it to run a shell script or whatever you need to do. Yeah. We, um, we actually have a job that uses it to run Puppet yeah. um, because it's testing a thing that does Puppet. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's really easy, Puppet. Um, and that's the an amount of Ansible that's in there. Yeah. 
Uh, and, and it's also, um, uh, I, we should have put a bullet point up for this, but um, uh, Zool v3 sort of natively handles multi-node jobs, uh, mm -hmm. and Ansible is great at orchestrating things across multiple nodes. Uh, so, um, so yeah. Uh, and we, uh, we added support for uh, GitHub. Uh, so Zool supports GitHub and Garrett, and uh, it can pretty seamlessly uh, integrate the two. So if you have some projects on GitHub and some projects in Garrett, and those projects have changes that depend on each other, that's fine. Zool doesn't care. It will uh, check them both out. And we actually just heard from, um, uh, from some folks this morning at, at Le, bon, Le Bon Coin. Yeah. Uh, who? Uh, that's about as good as either one of us are going to do. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to keep practicing that. Yeah, but, we're going to get it right one of these days. Yeah. Um, uh, who who had uh, you know part of their development org is on is in Garrett, part of it is on, in GitHub, and with, when they adopted Zool, um, those two groups started talking to each other again. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So we. Um, so since uh, since Vancouver, um, we've we've been pretty busy. Uh, we've made a lot of changes to, to Zool. Um, first up on the list is uh, we rewrote the web inter interface, which is actually kind of new in and of itself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for, for, for Vancouver, we had written the web, web interface in, in it, well, I, I want to say, uh, I, I mostly wrote some terrible Angular, uh, not knowing what the heck I was doing. Uh, and uh, that resulted in browser windows eating a lot of CPU uh, and other things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so luckily, um, uh, Tristan fixed that by rewriting it in React um, uh, and rewriting it well in React. <laughs> <laughs> so now the browser doesn't uh, cause my legs to burn when my, when my laptop is sitting on top of it, uh, which is very mm -hmm. exciting. Yeah. Um, we've added uh, inline code review comments. Um, a lot of people haven't seen this yet because it's very new uh, and we're still working on, uh, in OpenStack, we're still working on the jobs to take advantage of this. Um, but uh, but um, soon if you run a PEP8 job in Zool, uh, it'll be able to analyze the output and leave, uh, leave a comment directly on the line uh, that, that uh, is having a problem. So that'll save a lot of round trips uh, we think this will probably save like 600 developer years yeah. every year um, by uh, by saving a lot of round trips to the logs to try to dig out what the actual error message is. Yeah, it'll already do this now on Zool configuration errors. So if you if you push up a Zool job, uh, it 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 goes ahead and validates the the that YAML, and if that's incorrect, um, it'll it'll currently be leaving those as inline comments, um, and then. Uh, this is sort of a, an extensible system to take advantage of that for things that aren't built-ins to, to Zool itself mm -hmm. so that a, a job can define of its own free will, um, you know, based on what it is. Uh, hey, wait, I can now detect that you have a problem in this line of the code and report that back, which yeah. is super cool. It's not cool. too far from that city of pushing up a, a new patch set. To fix it? Yeah. yeah. Well, and after that, we'll just have Zool writing OpenStack. Yeah. Machine um, learning uh, <laughs> is, uh, is what we, is <laughs> plug that in and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, it's, it's either great or terrifying <laughs> or both. <laughs> uh, we now um, build Docker images on every commit that we land to the repository, and we push those images up to Docker Hub. Uh, so you can Docker our Docker with your Docker. You can totally Docker the Dockers. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, yeah, so so that's actually we we. Um, um, I, I know some folks are now using those images uh, to run Zool in production. Uh, that's, I think, a perfectly fine way to, to do it. Um, I, I look forward to doing that myself uh, someday soon. Yeah. Um, we've added, uh, sorry, we upgraded the version of Ansible that we support to Ansible 2.5. Um, we're, uh, Zool is very tightly uh, tied to the version of Ansible that it uses. Um, that's actually something we'd like to change, and, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but for the moment, we've, we've uh, been, been at least keeping up with a supported version of Ansible, uh, and we plan to, to keep doing that for the, uh, for the foreseeable future. Um, we added uh, support for Kubernetes uh, for build resources, so you can uh, you can request a a pod from Kubernetes uh, if you say just 
uh, again, using PEP8, you know, a linting job as an example. If you have a, a simple job that can run in a container, uh, you can request that from Kubernetes and, uh, and run it. Uh, but the other thing you can do uh, is, is really interesting. You can request a namespace from Kubernetes uh, with no resources uh, predefined. And, uh, and so if, you're, if your task is to deploy an application in Kubernetes, uh, you can get this namespace and then start deploying your app. And because at the same time as all of this, Zool is, um, you can still request virtual machines or, or static machines or whatever, you can combine those into either one job or a series of jobs so that you could, for example, ask for a virtual machine upon which you would build your container images uh, and also ask for a namespace uh, to start up those uh, containers. Uh, so that's a that's a, a I think a pretty it's I think we've got the uh, the workflow sort of uh, dead on for for that kind of um, uh, building container based microservices. So uh, I think once we get some examples out there, uh, people are going to be able to do a lot of uh, uh, cool things very easily. Yeah. It's it's worth noting for that for those of you who are involved in OpenStack development, uh, the Infra team does not currently have any Kubernetes's. Um, so uh, this this is a feature that exists in Zool, and that I believe some, I, in fact, not, and I believe I know that other people are using uh, in their their installations, uh, but it is currently not available to OpenStack projects to consume because there is no Kubernetes from which to get a namespace uh, that's on I'm the really, to do list. I'm really excited about this actually because yeah. it, it means that our community is uh, is is growing Zool faster than the <laughs> community which originated it is able to keep up with the, exactly. the pace of new features. Yeah, uh, that's so, cool. so that's a that's a milestone, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, uh, so using those nifty Docker images that we upload to Docker Hub, we added a, a Docker Compose quick start um, to the Zool repo. So if you actually go look in our documentation, you can see how to get this up and running. Um, you can with a single command, you can get a complete Zool system up and running in containers. Um, I, I'm not sure I would use it for production purposes, um, but- It's a uh, quick start. Yeah. It's, a, it's not an installer. Right, but uh, it is a thing to, to get a Zool up and running uh, to, that you can just start playing with uh, immediately. And uh, the, the, the documentation will walk you through setting up the config, uh, the config repo and setting up base jobs and things like that. And so by the end, you'll have a thing that you can, you can experiment with uh, creating your own jobs. Uh, we added a thing called the Supersedent Pipeline Manager. Um, Zool has uh, a sort of pluggable system of pipeline managers. Uh, we've had two since the beginning. Uh, uh, dependent, which is what you use for gate, and independent, which is what we use for check. Um, the Supersedent Pipeline Manager is sort of um, designed specifically for, for post jobs. Uh, so it's more efficient if you have a a busy repository that's landing changes that are publishing documentation all the time. Uh, Supersedent will, will make that a little bit, uh, a little bit faster. Um, let's see, how are we doing on time? Oh, we have seven minutes. Okay. Um, we added support for pausing jobs. Um, so going back to that sort of container use case again, um, you could, you can, for instance, have a, uh, have a virtual machine that you build your container images on and you can start up, say, a Docker image registry on that machine. You can then pause the job uh, and uh, Zool will keep that machine running while it starts other jobs, uh, other child jobs underneath that, which could then use the image registry that you've set up, um, do all of their work. Uh, and then when they complete, uh, the pause job will resume uh, and you can do whatever cleanup uh, you need to do after that. Yeah. And uh, we added another feature called uh, skipping child jobs. Uh, so this is something that, that folks who have sort of complex graphs of jobs that they may or may not want to run depending on uh, exactly what's in a change. You can perform, you could start off a job graph in Zool but with a, with a simple job that just analyzes what the change uh, is doing and then decides what children, what child jobs need to run. And then uh, Zool can either uh, 
basically, you can use this to dynamically decide which jobs are going to run for a change. Um, so that, uh, that's a new feature. Let's see, what else? Our roadmap. This is where Monty promises you um, amazing things, which may or may not be delivered. <laughs> <laughs> I think most of these things, there's at least something up for review. Yeah. Uh, oh, well, not that one, this except one. for the first one. Uh, but we know that we need to get that one done. So, so Jim was saying earlier uh, that we currently support, uh, we're tightly coupled to an ans a version of Ansible that's running uh, in, on the Zool executors, uh, and that makes um, when, you've, when you've got thousands of repos worth of jobs, uh, as we do in OpenStack, um, upgrading the Ansible that's going to run all of that content across all of those things in one fell swoop is uh, a terrifying uh, a concept uh, and, and not, not really one that um, I'm very pleased with each time we do it, because um, you, know, you never know. Um, so we're, we're, we've been sketching out ways to have uh, Zool support uh, a, a, a plethora of um, of Ansible versions and that jobs can uh, select which, which version of Ansible they need to, uh, to run on. So that should allow for more staged uh, and incremental uh, upgrades of content to newer versions of Ansible as they, as they come out. Um, and also uh, the other use case, uh, an another use case that is great, we have some projects in OpenStack um, like uh, OpenStack Ansible, for instance, uh, that support multiple versions of Ansible for their, for their project and they would like to test those. Uh, and that means right now they have to write jobs that, uh, that use the Ansible that Zool is running to run Ansible on a test node uh, so that they can run the version of Ansible that they want to run for that test. And that's sort of a shame because given that one of the benefits of Zool using Ansible should be that you can use your real Ansible as part of your testing, for the projects that are based in Ansible, they're actually the ones who have the hardest time taking advantage of this feature, and that's a real <laughs> shame. So we would like for them to be able to have Zool execute the Ansible for their job, uh, rather than having to run Ansible with Ansible uh, to be able to do that. So that'll be a, a cool thing to be able to allow them to do. Yeah, so hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll make it so that jobs can specify which versions of Ansible they want to use when they yeah. run. Uh, we've got more drivers in the works. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So many more drivers. Those are all yeah. up for, for review. Yeah, every, uh, there's actually a patch in review for every one of those. Yeah, and we've got people using the EC2 one in production somewhere, and I think the OpenShift one. I think both of those are being used by people, but they're just still being worked into, into sort of good shape for, for landing. The Azure driver has been written, uh, and we think it probably works. Uh, but nobody has an Azure account, um, so, uh, so <laughs> um, if anybody knows anybody who wants to give us a free Azure account uh, so that we can verify that that works before landing it, uh, that'd be cool. Uh, and I think the same thing, I think there's a, a prospective GCE uh, hmm. uh, thing up there that is in a sort of a similar state. It's like no one's actually using it, like nobody's tried using it because they don't have a, a one of those, so we'd like to land both of those, but we'd also like to verify that they work first, <laughs> so, uh, so that'll, be a, that'll be a thing. Um, those are also, uh, well, so we have a patch, a working project patch up for Pagure, which is a, a code review system that the Fedora project uses. Um, we don't have a patch up for GitLab, but we have a human, uh, which is even better than a patch, uh, at Ansible <laughs> Fest. Uh, a, a lovely human from, uh, from F5 was like, oh, I, I want one of those. And we're like, you want to write it? And he's like, sure. So, um, so he's, I think, uh, working on getting set up to, to do that. So that'll be setting. I've also, we've been, uh, uh, Bitbucket drivers have been, have been highly requested. Um, uh, we, we don't have, have a human, we don't for, have that a human for that yet, which makes me think that I'm going to wind up being the human for that. So I would love it if somebody wants to come and write a Bitbucket driver so that I don't have to. Um, Oh yeah, and you know, this, the REST API and web interface will continue to get better. Yeah, yeah, we, we've got lots of ideas about, um, uh, uh, well, we saw a great presentation this morning about, uh, uh, about a, a, a project called uh, Zuby, so um, we, want to, we want to steal all of that and, um, <laughs> uh, and, and, and put it into Zool. Yeah, so uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to uh, search, uh, have a search interface for Zool jobs and roles and, and just be able to navigate the, the configuration uh, very easily. Yeah, uh, we are actually uh, uh, basically at time. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so if anybody has any questions in the next minute, um, uh, you're welcome to ask them and there's a thing there, so yeah. yeah. 
How you doing? Uh, I hope this won't take a minute, but nah. uh, I was told to ask last time we checked whether it was okay to run Zool V3 in our third party CI. Uh -huh. It was told that we should not. Is it ready now? Uh, yeah, it's, it's ready. Um, and some people are doing it and they're running into some obstacles. Uh, so we're, we're continuing to improve things around that. Uh, if you're, if you're feeling uh, a little adventurous, then, then, then I would encourage you to, to go ahead and get started. Right. Uh, hang out in, on infra. Yeah. And yeah. talk to us in infra and we'll, we'll help work through the things. Um, and, and if you're feeling less adventurous, maybe wait a couple more weeks or something and, yeah. and, we'll, and, and hopefully it'll get a little bit easier. Working through a couple of the issues that we found from the first adventure set of adventurous people that, yeah. that try that. It's mainly you wind up having to add more upstream project references to the Zool than About the thing you actually projects. want to track. Okay. It's like you want to track Nova and all of a sudden you've got to add like 150 other repos to your to your thing and that's not ideal. Gotcha. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, it's possible, it's just a little more work for you, so. But yeah. Thanks. Uh -huh. I was raising, raising a recently a question uh, in Zool discussed about the way, the ways how user outside of OpenStack can operate Zool. It's not about how Zool functions, but how is it possible to operate? How is it possible to install it underneath OpenShift or Kubernetes and so on? Are mm -hmm. there any progresses there? It's basically the Zool itself is perfect, but there are no really good ways how to aim you are able to operate it. Right. Basically a question about uh, deployment. Yeah. What, what deployment options are there for Zool? Yeah. Uh, it was worth pointing out that uh, BMW actually runs their Zool in, in OpenShift. Uh, and uh, I believe GoDaddy was running theirs in vanilla Kubernetes. So uh, that has been done, but we have not so far gotten anything like Helm charts or, or like that's on the to-do list to like actually have some shared versions. And I think the people who have started running it in those environments have, have talked about wanting to work together on sharing, uh, sharing some of those uh, bits. Same thing with, uh, we, we, I think, want to get some Ansible playbooks uh, put together to, to do that uh, as well. So um, uh, it, I, it, I, think the, I think the windmill set of uh, roles and playbooks might be suitable for production at this point, but I haven't used them. Uh, yeah, well, I think that's actually, I think we need to update, because I think that our friend from F5 uh, started down that road and found a couple ah, of okay. roadblocks and, okay. uh, and we need to fix those. So there's a couple bugs in the things that are out there, um, but that's definitely on the, on the short, short term. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. I guess that's probably just some, at least some documentation for. Yeah. For that. I mean, to part of that's going to be deployment specific, specific right? But like to because generally scaling is is at a new executor, right? Yeah. And so how you do that is going to be a little bit different. To, Tobias showed us clicking on a on a thing to add more executors in his OpenShift that he was very happy about, and I was like, wow, that's interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, we need some documentation around that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're probably past time now. Probably past time, um, but we're we're here, we're here all week. Uh, mm -hmm. That's not true. We're here today and tomorrow. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, so the rest is today and tomorrow. Uh, so please feel free to find any of us. There's also um, some little one pagers and some um, uh, stickers up here on the table. If that's the sort of thing that you would like to have in your life, um, and after this, they will uh, themselves re-migrate back down to the dev. Uh, lounge uh, downstairs on the second floor if you miss them here. Uh, so anyway, thanks for, thanks for coming. Thank you.